Donald Trump. Well, he's speaking to Tucker Carlson at the moment, a bit of an in-conversation. Let's have a listen in there. I don't know what they're talking about. So think of this. It turned out the Mueller report, and I tell you, it was an amazing thing that happened because I had 18 radical left lunatics and I had Mueller who didn't know where the hell he was, okay? You saw that in the hearings. But think of this. I had no chance. It was a stacked court. But I had an angel in that court. I had somebody that wouldn't allow them to do what some of the sleazebags that you know, and you know who they are. Somebody on that court, and I think I know the person, high quality person, and would not allow them to do what they would have loved to have done, is convict even though you're totally innocent, you didn't even know what the hell. So we were exonerated fully. There was no hoax, there was no anything. We were exonerated fully. But, but just think of it, just think, and the Mueller report came out, and it was a complete exoneration, but here's a guy that made up a story that tried to put my son in prison for years. And he knew the story was false. They made it up. How bad a person do you have to be? And I heard the son of the President of the United States is going to jail, and he'll be there for many years on a story. Now, how would you feel if you're the kid? I mean, you're a young kid, and you're hearing this crap. Just think of it. But how bad do you have to be? So you know it's fake, because he made it up. And you know, he's a storyteller, too. You know, he writes little bullshit stories. You know that, right? But I just think they're really, we have some, and you know, I talk about the enemy from within, and they do have, they're the greatest con people in the world. Oh, they talk about how dare, that's a threat to democracy. They're always, they're the threat to democracy. You know, the amazing thing, the amazing thing is where they say, he wants to become elected, and he wants to put people in jail. How terrible. They want, that's what they've been trying to do to me for four years. And I, I should say that your son, Don, had five small children. When, five, can you imagine threatening a man with five kids with prison for a, a crime he didn't commit? So you said that you were saved in the end by an angel. How have your views about God changed in the last eight years, and particularly after getting shot? Well, look, I've always been a believer, but I wouldn't say, you know, there's a certain pastor, Robert Jeffress, and I didn't know, his name is Robert Jeffress, nice guy from Texas. And he said, you know, Trump may not be the best Christian of all, but he's the only one going to take us to the promised land because he's the best leader and he's the toughest guy and he's going to be able to get us through this crazy life. And he was a big supporter. And now I have unbelievable evangelical and Christian support because I have. I mean, I've done a great job for them. And we're, you know, we're, we're together. But he said he may not know the Bible quite as well as other people are supposed to. But, you know, he also did something. They picked Ronald Reagan over Jimmy Carter a long time ago. You know, that to sort of, that yeah. was, they said he wasn't quite as religious, but... He's the guy that's going to get the job done. And I really got, I did a great job with a lot of things having to do with saving religion because these people want to put religion out of business. These people are, you know, they go crazy when I say the enemy from within. And I said, look, we have China, we have Russia, we have Kim Jong-un, North Korea. We have a lot of people out there. But if you have a smart president, I had a great relationship with President Xi until the China virus came in. And that was a bridge too far, but we'll have a very good relationship. And there's reasons for them to want to like us. There's big reasons. But if you have a smart president who want that kind of smart, meaning with people, if you have a smart president, somebody that knows what's happening, you're going to be fine. But, you know, we do have an enemy from within. We have some very bad people. And those people are also very dangerous. They would like to take down our country. They'd like to have our country be a nice communist country or a fascist in any way they can. And we have to be careful of that. But they're the greatest con artists in the world because as soon as I said an enemy from within, they said, oh, he wants an, oh, he's saying an enemy from within. These are sick puppies, I'm telling you. Well, I mean, I gotta say, just objectively, I noticed that the second you left and Biden came in,
we didn't have any more Antifa riots, which makes me wonder if, like, how is Antifa not the militia of the Democratic Party? Yeah, but you do have, you did have a lot of riots and you have a lot of, you have a lot of people being hurt in a different way. You have a lot of, you have a lot of people being hurt very, very badly. We stopped, you know, we had a period of time where they wanted to tear down statues. Yeah. And, you know, they thought the statue of Abraham Lincoln should be ripped down immediately and a couple of others. And we stopped them. I signed an old bill that was old and dusty. It was like 1910 the uh, United Statues Act of, like, 1910. It said that if you tear down a statue or even get near it, if you don't want it, if up to the president, you go to jail for 10 years. And when they started getting a little bit frisky, I took that old dusty statue, hadn't been used in a long time, we took it out, and they were getting a little wild. Do you remember that period of time? And I said, I had a little news conference, and I said, anybody that touches a statue, they were going to rip down Andrew Johnson. They were going to rip down Andrew Jackson. And this, the rope was already on them. And I mean, I saw what was going on. And I signed that thing, and I had a news conference. I said, anybody that touches a statue, if you touch the statue, you're going to jail for 10 years with no parole, no early. No early getting out, and I looked, because there was a little discord in Washington, I looked at those people from the back, and I saw those people. I saw about 1,000 asses that were facing me as they headed, as they headed out of town. They were heading out of town, and we never heard from them again until recently, until recently, when you had, uh, about two months ago, you had some horrible riots in Washington, D.C., where they took spray paint and they sprayed the limestone lions and they burned the American flags badly. And, you know, I'd like to see anybody that burns the American flag one year in jail. I really believe that. You, you mentioned the enemy within. It's pretty clear, well, it's not clear, it's a fact that the CIA and the FBI, which are absolutely not allowed by law to have any influence in American politics, because that's the end of democracy, both of them and a bunch of other intel agencies worked against you on behalf of the Democratic Party from the minute you got elected in 2016. And they're still doing it. They're working against you now. What will you do about that? So one thing I've learned in Washington, it's all people. You got to get the right people. So when I got elected, I was only, according to the fake news, which I think in this case it wasn't fake, they said I was here 17 times during the course of my life and I never stayed over. So I wasn't a Washington person. I was a New York person. I knew New York, but I didn't know Washington. And all of a sudden, I'm the president of the United States. I'm saying, and I, did, I didn't know anybody. I said, hello, anybody? Does anybody would like to have dinner or something? But. So I had to rely on rhinos and, and good people, too. Even some good rhinos, there aren't too many of them. They're, they're sort of a dying breed right now, I would say, actually. But I had to rely on people that I didn't know to give me information. And I won't use any specifics, but I had some people in government with me, and I realized, and you know what, they, they have pretty much different philosophies than I would have or than you would have. And for the most part, we had great people. I mean, we had great trade people. I had great military people. I had the real military, not the millies, who's a, you know, they're, they're stupid people, some of these people. By the way, every one of those people having to do with Afghanistan should be fired immediately. Every general should be fired immediately. You know, Biden doesn't fire anybody. That's why he never has books written about Well, two reasons. Number one, nobody cares about him. It's not like, oh, let's write a book about Biden. Nobody cares. But the other thing is that he never, I don't think has he fired anybody. I don't think he's fired. I fired a lot of people. I didn't like people. I fired them. And then he immediately get called by the New York Times or somebody because they're very, I mean, they truly are the enemy of the people. They're the enemy of the people. Those people right there, for, not all of them, but about 91%. They're the enemy of the people. So they'll say, oh, he got fired, therefore he... And the interesting thing about firing people, you can fire them really nice, like even take... I've taken months nice and easy, have lunch, bah, let's think about it, bah, 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 bah. In the end, they get fired, and then they wake up the next morning, that son of a bitch fired me, right? <laughs> or 
You can do like I did on The Apprentice. You're fired. Get the hell out of here. Doesn't matter. When you fire somebody, you fire somebody. I've learned after years, you might as well just fire. Then I do another thing. I say, and I wouldn't do that again, I, because I'm, I'm a nice person. I don't want to hurt somebody. I say, give me a letter. You know what that means, give me a letter. I said, look, it's not working out. You're not the guy for me. Give me a letter of resignations. I say, give me a letter. Everyone knows what that means. So a guy will write a letter, dear, and then he'll say he quit. And that's okay. That's what I'm, you know, the problem is when that happens with me, it's always a big story. So-and-so quits. Virtually every person that gave me a letter, I said, give me a letter. Virtually every person that quit, they only quit because I said, essentially, you're fired. Get the hell out of here. But I want to be nice because I'm not looking to fire somebody publicly. I wouldn't do that anymore. I'm just going to say, if somebody doesn't work out, and no matter how good you are, you always have people that don't work out. It's interesting. Sometimes people, you think they're okay, maybe not so great. They turn out to be great. And sometimes you say, this guy is going to be phenomenal, and he turns out to be a stiff. But I had some, I had some people that were, you know, like, like a guy like John Bolton. A friend of mine calls me after I put him on. He said, don't hire that guy. He's no good. He's bad news. He's dumb as a rock and all that stuff. I said, it's a problem, but I like him for a different reason. He's the one that got... Donald Trump there. He's in Arizona.